So here it is zoomed in. It's on this particular layer. Uh, remember, double click on the blue part of the layer over here, and you can control it from here. So I'm just going to put this at 30 and click OK. So that gives me the, the setup. And again, you're trying to analyze the best way to do this. So Command R just to get a set of ruler guides to place in there. I'm not sure exactly where the center is, but from the uh, template it'll work. So I just need to move a new layer. And you can kind of see the blue lines from here. I could actually just duplicate that particular section. And again, as you work, you have fill in the strokes, so you're trying to build that up. So I can start with a fresh one and just take off the, the fill. And like I said, using the shape builder for these logos. So this is the outer edge, outside circle. Just command click so I don't inadvertently start selecting it. And this is the outside of the green part as best I can. So I'm trying to build this up, like I said, using the shape builder. So here's another one for the interior. And this one, just going to move it up a little bit. So I pretty much have three of the shapes created. <clears throat> Don't necessarily need to do too many more, but when you take a look at making this V shape as um, symmetrical as possible, I'm going to actually start and just use the pen tool on this one because it isn't perfectly even, but making these parts right on the ruler guide. Let me see if I can show you that again. So right in the center is where it's going to start. Click up here, shift key to keep it horizontal. Right back to the ruler guide. The smart guides are telling me that I'm right on target. And just click right there. So in this particular one, I'm just going to hit shift X so it'll flip it to be the color of the of black. And now I have it selected and just going to flip it across itself. I have the tools window shaded right here. You want to make sure that the entire piece is selected, not just a point. So deselect and select it again. Hold the option on the vertical line to click. That sets the center point of where it's going to flip from. And just hit copy. Okay. So now I have that particular piece. So I have all the parts and pieces. I can go ahead and give these a color just to make them a little easier to see. And since I started from the back to the foreground, they're overlapping. Choose the letter I for this particular color. Select that. So that gives me that color. So this one, a little difficult to see, so I'm just going to give a little bit more of a color right there so you can see it. Okay. So just select this over just so I can see what's happening. Everything is selected. And again, with the shape builder, it'll be easier just to drag it and drop everything that's placed inside there. So Shift M is going to be the keystroke for it. It does have a color for it. And you can see this whole outside edge. You don't, and unless you don't want it overlapping, you want to be able to have that as a free section. That becomes a color. Dragging through all the black becomes one shape. You can try that on there as well. And so now you have all these pieces that are separate. Okay, So you can just click on them to set them separate themselves. It'll use that color that's currently the foreground color. So I'll give it a different one so you can see it. And by doing that, instead of just having the shapes overlap themselves, you have a little more freedom as far as building this as one particular uh, graphic. So for example, if that's supposed to be taken out, it's very easily pulled together. Here's this piece. Separate, so it's there's nothing behind it, no overlap. These two shapes, I can use the eyedrop tool to grab the screen again. And two things, you can group it together or you can combine them. Makes it as one shape, compound shape. And this outside edge, so when you drag this across, you see that it's all placed together. And the reason for that is if you were, instead of just having pieces overlapped and you actually needed that shape, if it was cut out or made into a sign or a graphic of something like that, it's all set up there for you, placed in there pretty easily. So just kind of give that a little bit of a gray section there. 
So basically, it's just a simple uh, graphic placed in there, taking a look at it, and seeing as you start to work with other parts and pieces as illustrating this, giving it some other sections. We talked a little bit about patterns yesterday, and we've already talked about the gradients as you're going through it. So it'll give you some of the uh, sections that you can start to pull together and create different parts and pieces to it. So here's just trying to add some of these. And here's the book line going through all the different graphics for this piece. trying to get you to think of that section. And then, like I said, if it was something that had <coughs> shapes rather than just being individual shapes on its own, and it had to be back, backed up by that, you can use some of the effects as well to create some of the overall pieces. So kind of giving a little bit of a crop shadow to it. So see if you can't place that together using the shape builder to separate those shapes, keeping them so they're individual. I'll set it up for you. Try some of the effects that come with that.